Bonjour, Kinamagi and Nene Ireland and Dijnikas, and welcome to this production of Social Study Explorer. Today's episode, Settling the Middle Colonies. We'll begin today by looking back at Google Earth. You can see where we are here in central Michigan. Let's get our annotation tool out for us. Here are we. And we remember that this region here was New England. And this region here, running through the land of the Haudenosaunee, Coming down here towards Maryland. This is gonna be the area we call the middle colonies, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. This region is very hilly. If you've ever toward Washington, DC, this area here is the Appalachian Mountains, very tall hills up and down not the easiest place to try to travel. So a lot of our original communities are going to be founded along the coast. We have some major rivers here. Here's New York City on the Hudson River. You can see it here as we zoom in, a lot of people there now. But that river runs north well into the interior. If we go down here towards Philadelphia, we have the Delaware River. And it was deep enough that we could get large enough ships to facilitate trade to the old world. And obviously, you have the Chesapeake Bay could get us down here. So a lot of the people are going to settle in areas that are near water. And that's going to be one of the key things we see throughout all of our lessons. The middle colonies, things we should consider are the patterns of settlement and control, interaction with indigenous peoples, growth of economies in the middle colonies, Immigration patterns, compare the regional settlement patterns with New England and the middle colonies, and explain economic, political, cultural, and religious causes of migration to colonial America. And we've talked a little bit now about the geography in this region here. A lot of boats shipping so that means you're going to have pretty important ports like baltimore philadelphia new york where ships can travel essentially around the world because of the hilly terrain a lot of the people are going to build along here it also makes huge farms and plantations like you find in the south not so practical in this region, although there is obviously small time farming because people do need to, in fact, eat. We're going to look at two different documents today as part of this lesson. And both will be attached within your Google Classroom. First, settlements in the middle. The New, Amst New Amsterdam was founded by the Dutch as a fort and trading center. And Quaker settlements were found in what would become Pennsylvania. The Quakers, also known as the Society of Friends, are a religious order. There's also going to be the Mennonites that'll come into Pennsylvania, also known as the Pennsylvania Deutsch. Who was involved? People for, in New Amsterdam came from all over the world, including the first adherents of Judaism to come to the colonies. Um, some important names in Pennsylvania. William Penn, Pennsylvania literally translate, translates to Penn's Woods. When did this happen? New Amsterdam was founded 
in the 1620s, so not long after the first people come into New England. How, how and why? Well, the causes, a desire for profit and desire for religious freedom, that's going to be your Paul. And it also, new colonies between New England and the southern colonies were founded because it were filling in along the coast. So these are kind of your polling uh, elements. New Netherlands in 1644 by Reverend Isaac Jokes. On the this island of Manhattan, which is now Manhattan, Manhattan, and its environs, there may well be four or five hundred men of different sects and nations. The director general, governor, told me that there were persons there of 18 different languages. They are scattered here and there on the river, above and below, as the beauty of, and convenience of the spot invited each to settle. The river, which is very straight and runs due north and south, is at least a league broad before the fort. Ships lie at anchor in a bay which forms the other side of the island and can be defended from the fort. Shortly before I arrived, there are three large vessels of 300 tons each had come to load wheat and furs. When anyone comes to settle in the country, they lend him horses, cows, and they give him provisions, all of which he repays as soon as he is at ease. And as to the land, he pays into the West India Company after 10 years, the 10th of the produce which he reaps. This country is bounded on the New England side by a river which serves as a boundary between them and the English. The English, however, come very near to them. On the other side, southwards towards Virginia, its limits are the river which they call the South River on which there is also a Dutch settlement. It's about 50 years since the Hollanders came to these parts. The fort was begun in the year 1615. They began to settle about 20 years ago, and there is already some little commerce with Virginia and New England. This climate is very mild. There are many European fruits as apples, pears, cherries. I reached there in October and found even then a considerable quantity of peaches. And you can see that this is the Dutch settlement and the red here represents the English along the New England coast. So they are neighbors. And we have some questions there. On our second document, which looks a lot like the lessons you saw for the Southern and New England colonies. Remember, some, we talked about some of the poll here, but some of the push factors include the need for religious freedom. And if things weren't to your liking, there are now opportunities for you to move to someplace else. The English confront the Dutch. In 1646, Peter Stuyvesant became leader of New Netherland. At this time, there were lots of problems in the colony. He solved some, but created others. He expanded the colony be, by taking over parts of what are now New Jersey and Delaware, including a small Swedish colony called New Sweden. Many colonists began to complain about, about Stuyvesant. They wanted a stronger voice in the government, but Stuyvesant disagreed. He became unpopular with many people. As New England grew, England decided that the colony had become a threat, so England declared war on Holland. The King of England told his brother, the Duke of York, he could have the Dutch colony if he could take it over. In 1664, the Duke sent English warships into the harbor at New Amsterdam. The English sent Peter Stuyvesant a letter demanding he surrender New Amsterdam to them. He supposedly tore it up and refused to surrender. He tried to convince the Dutch to fight the English, but they refused. When Stuyvesant announced he intended to open fire on the English warships waiting in the harbor, residents of New Amsterdam pleaded with him not to fire. Eventually, New Amsterdam surrendered without firing a shot, and England took over the New, New Netherland. England split up New Netherland, giving it the names of New Jersey and New York. New Jersey was further divided into East Jersey and West Jersey and would stay under the control of the colony of New York for many years. New Amsterdam itself was renamed New York City. To the south of New York is Pennsylvania, and the people of Pennsylvania are going to come from different places, the first being the English. Although English Quakers were the main group of English people living in the colony, many English settlers belonged to the Church of England. The English settled heavily in the southeastern counties, which soon became the center of a prosperous farming and trade area. 
Philadelphia became the major city of the English colonies and a center of learning and trade. German immigration increased after 1727, and in the end, thousands of Germans were attracted to the colony. The Pennsylvania Germans settled most heavily in the interior counties of the counties of the colonies. They helped turn this area into a rich farming area, contributing greatly to the expanding prosperity of the colony. Scotch-Irish. Another important immigrant group was the Scotch-Irish, who immigrated beginning in about 1717. They came mainly because of a series of hardships in the county of Ireland. They mainly settled in frontier areas, first in the Cumberland Valley region, and then further into central and western Pennsylvania. African Americans. Despite Quaker opposition to slavery, about 4,000 slaves were brought to Pennsylvania by 1730, most of them owned by English, Welsh, and Scotch-Irish colonists. Many Quakers were Irish and Welsh, and they settled in the area just outside of Philadelphia. French and Jewish settlers, together with Dutch, Swedes, and other groups, contributed in smaller numbers to the development of colonial Pennsylvania. The mixture of different of various national groups in the Quaker colony helped to create its diversity and tolerance for differences. So the economy of Pennsylvania. Agriculture. From its beginning, Pennsylvania ranked as a leading agricultural area and produced surpluses for export, adding to its wealth. By the 1750s, an exceptionally prosperous farming area had developed in north and southeastern Pennsylvania. Wheat and corn were the leading crops though rye, hemp, and flax are also important. Manufacturing. The abundant natural resources of the colony made for early development of industries. Sawmills and grist mills were usually the first to appear, using the power of the numerous streams. Textile products were spun and woven mainly in the home, though factory production was not unknown. Shipbuilding became important on the Delaware River. The colony er early gained importance in iron manufacture producing pig iron as well as finished products. Printing, publishing, and the related industry of paper making as well as tanning were significant issues. The rivers of the colony were important as early arteries of trade, not unlike you would find with indigenous communities, and were soon supplemented by roads in the southeastern area. Trade with the American Indians for furs was important. Later, the transport and sale of farm products to Philadelphia and Baltimore by water and road formed an important business. Philadelphia became one of the most important centers in the colonies for trade. We have now reached the end of this session. You will have some questions available in the Google Classroom or using this paper copy. We talk about reasons for founding, the influence of geography, economic activities, push factors, and poll factors. You can also do a presentation on the founding of the middle colonies using Flipgrid, or you can fill out this document on a Google form. If you have any questions about the middle colonies, please do not hesitate to reach out to me at myirland at sagchipschool.net because we always encourage you to take some information and then learn more about it. Hope you all have a minute. Bye, my pee.